Good morning, everyone. This is Perry Mixter, project manager for Power to Give, uh, based in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're pleased to be uh, providing this uh, tr online training workshop for you. Uh, we're excited about the fact that I can't do a webinar right at all. Take four. Good morning, everyone. This is Perry Mixter. I'm project manager for Power to Give, based in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're pleased to be providing this online training workshop for you, uh, sponsored by the Greater Columbus Arts Council. Uh, we're very pleased that the Arts Council is bringing power to give to your market, and this training workshop is designed to give you the tools and information you need to provide to post great projects on power to give. What we'll be covering this morning is uh, a brief introduction and background about Power to Give. We'll talk about uh, keys to posting stellar projects, uh, great projects, and how you actually do that online. We'll talk about tools to market projects to potential donors and those launch plans that we have in mind for October, coming up October 17th. So let's get started. Power to Give was uh, established after a review of the cultural uh, fundraising climate in Charlotte and elsewhere. Uh, it's a pretty common uh, knowledge within the industry that 85% of, of those who provide, uh, who support uh, uh, organizations in the cultural sector through ticket sales and attendance uh, don't uh, actually make ch charitable contributions to those organizations. So we have a significant amount of our supporters who are not donors. We've also done some research and that tells us that donors would give significantly more if they had more information about how those uh, projects and how those, how those funds would be used towards specific projects. And finally, we see a huge increase in the amount of online giving uh, in the last couple of years specifically, and this has been the advent of result of the increase in crowdfunding activity on the web. Uh, so we see a dramatic increase and uh, much more comfort level by individual, individual donors to make gifts online. The way Power to Give works is pretty straightforward. Um, we are working with communities around the country with local site hosts such as the Arts Council here in Columbus, uh, to establish Power to Give. Donors uh, make gifts through Power to Give, and they give to specific projects that you all will be providing and creating. Uh, and then those funds will be directed back to your projects and your organizations, and hopefully uh, develop a chain, a circular chain, where you will encourage those same donors to give to additional projects as time goes on. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, the way it's differentiated from Kickstarter and other uh, uh, commonly known uh, crowdfunding sites is that Power to Give is specifically designed for nonprofit use. Uh, this is a totally charitable platform where 100% of the donor's gift is tax deductible. Um, the other unique feature about Power to Give as opposed to uh, Kickstarter is that the money you raise, uh, you get to keep. Uh, on Kickstarter, as uh, for those of you who may have used it, you know that if you don't raise the, the, all of the funds, you don't get any of it. But that's not the case with Power to Give. We're also seeing that 46% of donors are first time contributors to the organizations that post those projects. So that really addresses the issue of getting to that 85% of folks who aren't supporting you. Another unique function of the Power to Give site is the capability it has to provide you with matching funds for your project. So, uh, the Greater Columbus Arts Council is busy securing additional matching funds so that when you post your project online, uh, you can tell your donors that every dollar they give will be matched with another dollar from another source. So that's an exciting incentive for you. The final uh, differentiation is the, the ability to have uh, gift cards. Uh, we have uh, supplied those in Columbus, and you can provide gift cards to your donors uh, in, in any quantity you like and encourage them as part of the holidays, for instance, if they want to, uh, to give gift cards, power to give gift cards to support your projects, great option to do uh, that around the, around the community. So again, great options that you have with Power to Give. Results so far, uh, to date, Power to Give ha is in about 18 communities around the country. Uh, we've raised over $3.55 million for projects around the country. That represents about 1,500 projects uh, system-wide, and we have processed over 16,000 individual donations. 
we're very pleased with this rapid process in only 18 months. The average project uh, posted is $4,800, uh, and the average posting time for that project is 62 days. There is a 90-day window for Power to Give projects, and so you can see that uh, we're trending well below that. The average gift across the site is about $128, but in your market size, we have found the average gift to be closer to $50. So as you're designing your projects, you need to think in terms of donors giving you in that range of $50 to $100 on average. In terms of uh, sites launched throughout the country, you can see that we have been very successful on the eastern, sea, uh, eastern part of the country and now are expanding into the west. But again, as I said, we're in 18 communities and by the end of 2013, we'll be in 21 communities. So we're excited about this rapid growth. The implication in, in all of our findings is that donors really do want more of a relationship. They want to co-create projects with you and work with you uh, to have an immediate say in how those dollars are being used. So that's really what Power to Give was created to address. We're going to talk about the specifics of this, but when you start thinking about projects, we want you to think about what you could uh, design and post on, project, uh, on Power to Give in the next uh, 30 to 60 days. What would you want to give to as an individual uh, when you're considering uh, projects that your organization can present? Uh, what is compelling and impactful? What is, uh, carry, uh, carries emotion in the community? And what would really appeal to those donors? Keeping in mind that the, the, um, whatever you design needs to be project-based. In other words, it needs to have a, a finite start and end point. Uh, for Columbus, projects can be between $1,000 and $10,000 in budget size, uh, so you can keep that in mind. You know, projects can be budget relieving activities. You don't have to create new activities just for power to give. Uh, we encourage you to look through your current operating budget and identify uh, projects and programs that you can pull out and post on power to give. We've had a lot of different organizations post um, things like Choruses will, will ask for support for rental of choral scores, or uh, dancers ask for toe shoes. Uh, all those kind of things are perfectly fine for Power to Give. The key there is to design it in such a way that it's compelling and impactful and tells your story and gives a message, uh, sends your message to that, organ, to that community member, that donor. Uh, we also encourage you, if you have new initiatives, Power to Give is a great platform to introduce new initiatives uh, that may be a little bit out of the box. So you can do either one. Uh, Power to Give projects can be for programs, for equipment, facilities, scholarships, you name it. Whatever you need, um, Power to Give can be the platform you raise the money for. We also encourage you, as you go through and look at the other sites, the other 18 sites that are online, uh, take a look at the completed project section in each site. You can uh, go through, uh, let's say, Indianapolis, Kentucky. You can go to all those different sites and find organizations that are similar to yours and post those projects and, and take a look at the projects that have been posted by those organizations, how they wrote the narrative and how successful they were. Great, uh, great place to start your, um, your uh, brainstorming. So I encourage you to take a look there. In terms of posting logistics, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, this webinar, you should be eligible. You can check with the Greater Columbus Arts Council about your elig eligibility. Uh, they, will, they will be able to tell you. Uh, basically, the eligibility requirements uh, relate to the project taking place within Franklin County, Ohio. Uh, but the Arts Council can advise you on more specifics. Um, other logistics, there is an administrative fee taken out of every uh, donation, and this is how power, the Power to Give platform is funded. Uh, there is no cost to your organization, so don't think that you're going to be uh, assessed any kind of fees going forward. Um, when your donor makes a gift, 10% of that gift does cover credit card fees, site maintenance, and marketing, and you can build this cost into the price of your project, into your project budget. So that if your donor gives you $100, you're going to be receiving 90 of those dollars. Um, and we encourage you to be transparent about that. We're very specific about that in the, uh, in the donation process and have had no complaints about this. People are very used to um, service uh, charges such as this on the Internet, on online giving. Uh, every time you post a project, you will be agreeing to a set of terms and conditions, and we'll show you uh, where that is in the, in the process. Um, 
And the funding timeline is you will receive your donor dollars very shortly after your project closes, either at the end of 90 days or if your project closes sooner or it's fully funded, um, you'll get those dollars within a matter of days uh, from the Arts Council. There is a shelf life for every project on Power to Give. You have 90 days to get your project funded and you get the, the funding regardless of, of if you reach uh, the 100% of project funding. So let's say you have a $5,000 project and you only raise $500. It would be incumbent upon you to follow up with your donors um, to let them know how you're going to modify that, that, uh, that project based upon the results. So that's totally up to you. Um, but at any point in the, in, in the process, donor information is available to you. Every time a donor makes a contribution to your project on Power to Give, you'll receive an email in real time as they give to your projects. You can also access uh, donor lists and reports at any time via the dashboard. And we'll, we'll show you how that works here in just a second. Okay, now we're gonna take a few minutes and show you um, how to get around the site, uh, how it works uh, from both a, a donor perspective and as a posting organization. So let's, uh, let's switch gears here, just let's do a little bit of a site demonstration, show you the, the uh, Power to Give uh, platform as it currently exists in one location, and this happens to be your neighbors in Indianapolis. As you can see, the Power to Give uh, website, and again, we encourage you to explore this yourself, but it's basically organized fairly straightforward. Uh, we have the uh, site location at the top. Uh, we have on the left, you have search categories for uh, different, uh, different projects and different categories of projects. So if you want to find a specific organization, uh, you can choose that here. You can also do a keyword search. So again, it's fairly robust search mechanism. The page, the initial page shows a total of five projects. Each uh, page has five projects and then there are uh, additional pages that you can uh, click through. So in this case, in, on, on the Indianapolis sites, there are a total of uh, 25 projects uh, listed at this point. These are organized in descending order of how much money has been raised as a percentage basis. So you can see percent completed. This project, Some Art Will Die, is, uh, has 80% of funds raised. Uh, and it has nine days to go. So it's coming up on its deadline. You can also see that this project has a matching fund. This is uh, Chase Bank has provided some funding in Indianapolis for their projects. And you, it says your gift goes further. The sponsor will contribute a dollar for every dollar donated. So uh, that's a, a very quick uh, kind of review of, the, of the, all the different projects. So let's say we wanna look at this uh, particular project. We're gonna learn more about it. We're going to click on the Give and Learn More button, and this sends us to a project detail page, and this is uh, showing what uh, the information that you will be providing for each of your projects, how it's displayed. Uh, again, this is more detail about the projects. There is a video that's available to, to, uh, to watch, so if you click on the watch video, um, we can take a look at that. And again, it's going to play their, their project. Uh, don't think you can hear that, but we're gonna, again, they have a two minute video here and that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good one to start with. Uh, we, again, give you a suggestion on that a little bit later. There's some other components here that we want to point out. This is your project narrative. Uh, this uh, text block here describes the project in greater detail and gives the donor all the information about this project. On the right-hand portion here are the donor benefits, and this tells the donor what they will receive for different giving levels. So again, we'll be going through this in some detail uh, as we show you how to, how to post a project. So I wanna just give you a real sense of idea how, how this works from the donor standpoint. So I'm gonna demonstrate uh, with a $5 gift uh, to this project. I'm gonna add this to my giving cart. And then if I, uh, as a donor, want to continue to uh, search for projects on Power to Give, I can, continue to, um, I can continue to give by clicking here and going back to the previous page. The site also provides recommendations for similar projects or similar organizations. And if you have more than one project posted, that project will be listed down here also. So again, it's kind of like Amazon in terms of recommendation uh, providing that information for you.
So uh, that is uh, that is the uh, easiness of providing the donor information. I'm going to go ahead and complete this donation, and that's going to take me to the uh, transaction screen, which has already my information already filled out. I'm going to, I have a gift card which I'd like to use, so I'm going to click on the gift card option and enter that here, and I'm going to complete the donation. And there's one last check, making sure all this information is accurate. So I'm going to submit my gift. Now what happens now, a couple of things happen simultaneously. Uh, I'm going to get an email as a donor, uh, and I'll show you how that, that shows up in my inbox. The uh, project poster will get an email. And also, as you see from this sl slide, uh, you have the opportunity to share this project with friends and family once you've made it. So you can do an email. You can click on this email box and fill out, the donor can fill out friends and family and send a message. And that will provide the specific URL for that specific project. Again, this can be customized very easily. So that's an opportunity. You can also post the project to say that I just gave uh, on Facebook. So this is going to go to my Facebook timeline. And that can be, uh, we can make a, a personalized comment so I can post it there. And so again, this is giving your donor the opportunity to use social media to spread the word about your project. And so that's one of the key components of Power to Give and its ability to use social media to promote your projects. So going back to uh, going back to look at some projects again, we want to show you uh, a little bit more. We're going to go back to the project page on Indianapolis, and again, this is where you're going to search uh, completed projects. So let's say uh, you're a symphony orchestra and you want to know more about music, or you want to see what the Indianapolis Symphony has posted, or some symphonic organization. We can go down here and take a look at the Indianapolis Symphony and update the results on what they've done. And you can find projects that are posted from Indianapolis. You can also search on music, which is more general, and you can go ahead and search any one of those. So again, we encourage you to explore those sites uh, all over the country. Uh, you can do that by going to the Power to Give homepage and choosing a state. Uh, here in North Carolina, we have a number of sites you can choose any one site and pick and take a look and see what's going on in that site. So you pick Charlotte, and then we go to Charlotte. <clears throat> and there's a Charlotte site. <clears throat> so we encourage you to take a look there. So that's the donor, uh, that's the donor experience. We want to now show you a little bit about how it's going to work for you all as project, um, project organizers and posters. So this is uh, the login screen, and we're going to give you that coordinate here. Uh, in fact, I'll do this right now. I'm going to copy that and give it to you in the chat section. This is the URL uh, that you will use to uh, log in to register. You'll need to register the first time, and then subsequent visits you can log in using this, uh, this access point. So as a new organization, every one of you has to go through a very brief and simple uh, registration process. And the way you do that is clicking on the register, register link. So you're going to click on that link right there. And this is going to create a new account for you. And I've gotten advanced permission from Warren Hire to use him as a guinea pig. Thank you, Warren. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and enter Warren's information here. I hope it's still in my, there we go. And I've given his given him his password. So you can create your own password there. And let's see. And his address, just give me one second to fill this all in. zip code and his phone number 
And we're going to, the other thing you need to do, and, and this is a little tricky, but make sure that you're going to need to create your, your new company. Everybody has to create a new company and not select one that's already there. So make sure you click on that new company option. And in Warren's case, this is the Central Ohio Symphony. And it's Warren Higher. I don't have his tax ID, but we can go back in. Warren, you can go back in and edit that later on. We're going to do the address again, phone number again. Ohio and the zip code. And you're going to register. So now Warren's all set, right? Warren has now, as you all will have, your own personalized project dashboard page. And the one thing I want to show you here in the center is the permanent URL for all of, this is the permanent URL for all of the Central Ohio Symphony projects going forward. So this is the URL that you can use in your marketing and promotion materials. You can put it on your, um, your tagline for your signature, your email signature. This will always point to the projects that you have um, currently up on Power to Give. So that's something that you're going to want to hold on to and utilize as much as possible. Some other features of this page, um, because it's a blank page, you don't see any project at this point. We're going to show you how that works in just a second. On the left hand side, you'll see that you'll have a listing of all the corporate matching funds that are available at the current time. So this will give you a, 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 a kind of a, a running total of what's available uh, from matching funds that the Arts Council has, has secured for you for you all's use. Now, Ruby will work with you to figure out which of these is appropriate for your projects. Each one of these may have restrictions. For instance, you may have a corporate match just for arts education projects. Maybe you just have a match for dance projects. Uh, again, there could be a bunch of different uh, restrictions. So uh, Ruby and her staff will be in touch with you and let you know which of these you're eligible for and uh, work with you on that uh, specifically. So, But you can always go in and take a look and see what's available on the site at any given point. Now, uh, the key navigation point here is this, uh, this pull-down box in the upper right-hand corner. And the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new project. So that's where you do it. There are also uh, options for donor reports. So in the future, you can pull specific reports for, uh, for your projects. You can manage your account information. You can change everything in your account but your email address. So um, you can do that. If you need to change your email address, you'll need to let Ruby know, and we'll, we'll make those changes and show you how to do that. But uh, we encourage you to pick a, um, a, an email address that will be fairly permanent for your organization. In this case, we're going to just go ahead and show you how to create a new project. So we're going to click on that link. And this takes you to the Submit a Project page. And this is the uh, provides all the information that we need uh, to get your project posted. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, a, a kind of a dummy project for Warren. And Warren, you can go back in and change this uh, with the information for your first project. So well, let's say he's a symphony. We want to do... Um, uh, we want to do... Uh, Kitty concerts, kitty concerts, uh, enliven Delaware. And let's say Warren needs to needs to secure uh, $7,500. Type that in. Uh, again, it's digits only, no dollar sign or comma. Now the posting start date uh, for all projects, at least for right now, is going, is going to be October 17th because that's the launch date. And you'll see when you put in that first date, it's going to automatically populate 90 days out. So this is going to run from October 17th to January 15th. Now, if Warren wants to do a shorter campaign, let's say he wants to do a quick and dirty 30-day campaign, he can do so. All he has to do is modify the end date. But uh, that's automatic, automatically going to default to uh, the 90-day uh, window. The project start date. Uh, is when the actual projects take place. So let's say this is a springtime concert event. So we're going to say this isn't going to start until uh, February 1st, and it's going to run through, let's say, the end of March. 
Now we encourage you, uh, this is not, uh, the project end and beginning dates are not shared with the public. This is really for the Arts Council's review purposes. We wanna make sure that you're actually raising the money prior to actually doing the project you're raising money for. It's, it's unethical and probably um, not good uh, business practice to be raising money while you're actually conducting an event. So make sure that your project start date is, uh, is after the end of the posting date, okay? Now in, in Columbus, uh, they have established these characteristics or uh, categories. So in this case, we're gonna select performing arts, it's like music, uh, and again, he can uh, Warren can go back in and modify whatever is is needed. Let's say we also want to do community engagement. Uh, I don't happen to have any uh, files, uh, photo files from the central uh, uh, the central symphony, so I'm going to go ahead and pick something of from my. Uh, let's see here. We're going to pick one. Hang on a second. Not that one. Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and pick, there we go, pick a picture of a, of a, or of a full, ho, full house. And again, you are required to have a photo, so that's where you're gonna enter the photograph. Uh, make sure that it is 250 pixels by 250 pixels uh, in, in size. Anything larger than that, the, or the uh, system will not, uh, will not accept. Uh, we also encourage you to have a YouTube video, and again, this doesn't have to be complicated, but it could be um, it could be something that you do with your smartphone. Uh, and there are lots of really good examples uh, of how this has been done with arts organizations. So you don't have to spend any money at all, really. But really, having a, a you know 60 to 90 second to two minute video uh, would be a very impactful thing for your project. So that's where you would enter that. And again, it would be a YouTube video. You can create a YouTube account and then copy and paste the uh, URL into this box. In terms of the project content, this is where you're gonna enter the project narrative. You'll remember that we had uh, the narrative here. Um, if, we, if we click on any of these projects, this block right here is where you're gonna be, uh, this, is that, this is the information that's going to be um, entered here. So we're just gonna enter the project narrative and we'll leave that to Warren. Uh, but you also wanna have a, a two to three line budget type this morning and then any other information you want to tell about the project itself uh, again telling their story in a very compactful and impactful and compact way uh, that's the project narrative section then you have the donor benefit section so let's say uh, for fifty dollars um, you're going to get a signed uh, letter of appreciation from participants. And again, for donor benefits, we encourage you to uh, think in terms of what emotional impact you can make with your donors. They're not looking for t-shirts, they're not looking for coffee mugs. Uh, in fact, we encourage you not to post anything that has any um, cash value that can be deducted from the value of the contribution. So think in terms of uh, invitations to events, to behind the scenes activities, where the donor can meet the people that are actually receiving the, the, the program that you are providing the community. So again, that's where the donor benefits would be listed. There is a section for project notes, and this is a back channel communication between you and the Arts Council staff. If you have a question or comment, uh, you can put it here, uh, asking Ruby and her staff to uh, provide you feedback. She will also share with you her information and her response when you submit the project. Um, this is where it would appear. So again, this does not appear in any way on the public site. So we're going to do a, uh, we have, Warren has fulfilled all of his information here. You can see how simple this is. The other thing I want to point out is this lovely floating green box, which has a lot of really good information about uh, how to, how to write a good project, how to design a good project. So we encourage you to check those out. Won't spend time doing that today. But as you get to the bottom, you'll see that there's this little section here. And before you click the submit button, uh, please click here to review and agree to the terms and conditions. This is where, um, this is that contractual agreement that we talked about earlier uh, between your organization and the uh, Greater Columbus Arts Council. And this is the, the legalese uh, agreement between the two organizations. So in order to post a project, 
you have to come down and click I accept. Uh, I'm not going to do that because Warren hasn't, we're not going to submit this at this point, but that's what he would do when he's ready to, to submit this to uh, Ruby and her staff. When he's ready to do that, he would click the submit button and then uh, Ruby would get an email saying that he had submitted this project and it's ready for review. We're not going to go there because uh, this is still a work in progress. So Warren can click on the save button. And now this will take you back to the project dashboard and it shows you what the project will look like when it's online and posted uh, on the actual uh, site. You can see it's got the, the image that I selected. It's got the, it's got the title and all the information here. And then so when he's ready to go back and edit this project, he can click on the edit button and it takes him back to that other page and he can go ahead and change this later. So really that's all there is to, um, to, to designing and posting a project from a um, logistical standpoint. I hope that makes sense. Let me just see if there are other questions. Don't see any questions at this point. So we are going to go back, uh, continue talking about the design function and how uh, what makes a good project. We've also uh, let me just move through these uh, and we want to talk about how to write your story and tell your story. Uh, and this is every bit as important as actually posting the project. We have found that the title and the photo uh, on Power to Give are the most important elements that you can be thinking of um, in designing your project. So coming up with a clever title that captures the imagination, a photograph that, again, you're talking about pretty small real estate on a screen, so it needs to be impactful. It needs to be uh, something that grabs people's vision, or people's sight. So these are the first impressions. Keep it unique and fun. And I think the most successful projects we've seen on Power to Give are ones that have some little bit of whimsy, uh, obviously an emotional connection uh, for the uh, for, between the organization and the donor. So keeping it unique and fun is really critical. Keeping the title length short, um, 30 characters max is really what we're seeing, but you can go as far as 52 if you need to. Again, writing that narrative, this is not a place where you want to write pages and pages. Two to 300 words is fine. Keep it brief. You're really remembering that you're writing for the web. You're writing for the audience that is scanning things very quickly. We ask that you think about writing it in the first person. How would you explain this if you were in your backyard talking over the fence to your neighbor? Um, how would you tell the story? You're writing to individual donors. You're not writing to foundation or corporations. So we don't need to have a lot of techno babble unless you want to make fun of techno babble, in which case that's uh, pretty funny. Uh, a lot of theater folks have actually done this to great effect in a number of different places. Um, so remember your audience. And telling the key ingredients, you know, what, what do, when you make a gift, what do you think about? What is it that, about this project that's really going to tug at the heartstrings of your constituents? Um, and being transparent, uh, be forthright with the, the budget. Tell them, you know, yes, we're going to spend X dollars on marketing. We're going to spend X dollars on transportation. Uh, here's the power to give B. Uh, list all those. You don't have to go through 10 lines, but maybe four or five lines will, will tell the story. A couple of examples of, of bad and good projects uh, posted. This is one from Charlotte uh, by an unnamed uh, choral group. Uh, the title is Help Keep Live Classical Music in Charlotte. And I'm not going to read this, but you can see that it's very wordy and it's not terribly, to my mind anyway, it's not terribly, um, it doesn't capture my attention. Uh, it's too long. Uh, it's not creative. The picture is, if you look very closely, it's probably a really good picture because they're all uh, in, a, in different states of animation, but it's a group shot. And in this case, group shots really don't work terribly well on Power to Give. If you had a face of a, coral, of a singer, a, a close-up, that might be a little bit more powerful. But again, to my mind, this, this, uh, this is a very average posting, not, not terribly compelling. This one, on the other hand, we've used a lot. Um, this is a, a theater group in Charlotte. We encourage you to go and look at their um, at their postings. It's the Carolina Actors Studio Theater, and they needed a new vacuum cleaner for their lobby. And so the title is Our Vacuum Doesn't Suck. And the uh, narrative is very simple. Our vacuum cleaner sucks. Actually, it doesn't, and that's the problem. We need a vacuum that sucks. Specifically, we need a Hoover HOOC 1800010 Conquest bagless upright. 
I think they're making fun of the techno speak there. This Hoover sucks more than any other Hoover has ever sucked. Uh, $575 buys cast the suckiest vacuum on earth. Help us, please. These carpets aren't going to suck themselves. And then you can see the donor benefit is that the donors are invited to a demonstration of the sucking power of this vacuum cleaner. The donor of the greatest amount will be given the opportunity to take this bad boy on its maiden voyage across the lobby carpet. It's that kind of writing style that really does capture people's imagination. So we encourage you to, um, to think in, in, in out-of-the-box terms when it comes to writing these, these narratives. Donor testimonial, uh, this is a, a great quote that we like to, to feature. Uh, this donor loves exactly knowing where the money is going and how, and there's so many choices to support. The best part is hearing from the organizations directly, whether it's a thank you card from the program participants or an invitation to see and hear firsthand performances by the students. Power to Give never gets stale because new and very creative, diverse programs are added all year long. So again, this is getting exactly to the, the, the impact of Power to Give that we're seeing around the country. A couple of other points, we're getting close to wrapping up here. So if you have uh, closing questions, please uh, put them in the question box and we'll get to them in just a second. Uh, make sure you don't affect the tax deductibility. The, uh, again, don't offer tangible items that, are, that affect the tax deductibility. So no coffee mugs, no, uh, no gala tickets, uh, no tickets of any kind, unless you're having a free concert. Um, so want to make sure you do that. I think it's very critical as you go through this to uh, thank and engage your audiences once they've made their gift, um, having them feel part of the process. So your follow-up, once you get that notification of their gift, uh, that you follow up with a thank you and let them feel involved in participating in the program that they're supporting. Invite them to a behind the scenes experience and you'll have a new family member. When you're doing the uh, designing your benefits, think about how you can tie those benefit levels to the items you need within the project. In this example, for $50, you can cover the cost of art supplies for one class of children and receive a handwritten note from one of the children. So that's a really great example of, of making the donor feel totally engaged in what the benefit level is. So how will donors come? Well, this is a very important component and we wanna make sure that, that you understand how this is designed. Um, the Arts Council will promote the site and the brand in Franklin County. Uh, they're using Power to Give to promote, uh, to expand their reach in, into the county. They're going to promote it with email messages, with a, a marketing, a full-fledged marketing campaign. Uh, they're gonna be using Facebook and Twitter and a number of different ways to promote the Power to Give brand. They're gonna be pursuing the matching funds and the gift card donors. And the support team that you need to have um, in your Rolodex is Ruby Harper and De Deanna uh, Polsma. Uh, they are the folks, the go-to folks on the, the Arts Council staff for questions you have about Power to Give and your, your projects and how you want to proceed with that. It is also important to recognize that it's up to you and your organization to create and design these projects and then proactively promoting the projects hosting the project and hoping that people come to the site is not a successful strategy. We have seen this time and again. Uh, you cannot rely on the Arts Council or anybody else to send people to your projects. It is that dedicated URL that you'll use in your marketing materials that will drive your donors to view your projects on Power to Give. So that creative project design is key. Uh, promote to your current audience and segment for different messages. We can talk about that in just a second. And again, the matching funds are available uh, on a live basis. So as people make gifts, those funds are reduced. So that if you have a, uh, you know, if you start on the launch date with, let's say, and again, we're not sure what that total amount will be, but as make, people make gifts, that those funds will be reduced uh, live in real time. It doesn't happen after the fact. Uh, so I want to think about having you identify who in your organization can be advocates for these projects. Is it a board member? Is it a project? Is it someone who's involved specifically with the project, a volunteer, staff member? Encourage them to share the project within their spheres of influence that might not be in your current sphere of influence. Uh, and to utilize this within the context of your existing marketing plans uh, is critical. 
social media opportunities, uh, you know, email and e newsletters are great, but it's really not enough. Um, need to encourage donors to spread the word through their Facebook and Twitter accounts. Uh, liking the Power to Give Facebook page will help uh, generate recognition uh, around the country and in Columbus as well. Um, and again, if you have existing social media plans for Facebook and Twitter, for blogs and e-newsletter, YouTube channels, all those components, uh, you should incorporate Power to Give as part of that process. The lessons we've learned is that telling your story is far more powerful than asking for money. If you tell your story well, the money will follow. Um, having ambassadors is a key component. Uh, promote the project impact first. We're not asking you to promote Power to Give. We want you to promote your projects. The Power to Give really is just a tool uh, for you or a platform for you to promote your projects. Uh, there are different approaches that you can take for different constituencies, so keep that in mind. And you can also think about in terms of collaborating with other organizations, and maybe that would be a terrific, uh, a terrific project to reach out to new, new sections of your community. This is a sample of project promotion, and again, we'll have this uh, we'll have this available to you, uh, this slideshow available to you uh, through the um, Columbus Arts Council site. I'll show you where that is in just a second. Uh, again, this is just a very simple marketing campaign for a particular project, and it shows how you go from the the general on the left to specific on the right. So, in this case, it's a project for uh, the Charlotte Symphony uh, for, for supporting a fireworks project. The second column talks about the three groups that they've identified as possible supporters, board members, young affiliates group, and musicians. The third one is to identify which of those, uh, which, who, who is the ambassador for each of those, uh, those organizations. The fourth column is the call to action. What are you going to be specifically asking them to do beyond giving money? Um, there are specific things you can encourage them to help you with. And then what is the message? And then what is the strategy for, uh, you know, how you're going to get that message out? And then what are your tactics for connecting with the audience? So again, this is going from the general to the specific. And you feel free to use this as a template for a very simple marketing promotion for your organization. We've already made available on the Arts Council site a electronic toolkit that you can download that has uh, just copious uh, samples of different uh, ideas for promoting your projects. Uh, we have been doing this for two years now, so we've learned a lot about what we can, what, what can be done with social media. Uh, so encourage you to take a look at that, and I'll show you where that is uh, here in just a second. If you go to the Arts Council site, and they're doing a great job with this, you go to their homepage, and you click on the Grants and Services uh, link here, and scroll down to Power to Give. There's a separate navigation uh, for that, and this gives you fairly simple information. And there's some resources down here, and then you can download the toolkit from um, this link right here. It's a PDF file. And we'll be posting more things here as we go along to help you post your projects. So those are all available to you. Uh, again, reinforcing the fact that we're finding that 46% of donors, 46% uh, 46 46 of uh, Power to Give donors had not given to the organizations they have supported. This is a very critical uh, element to show that Power to Give is reaching new uh, target markets in every community. So you've got the donors. Uh, the thank you process is very critical. Once you receive that automatic email, uh, that's up to you to provide additional support, uh, to uh, additional information to those donors going forward. Um, you're going to get blind copied on all the information that the system sends to the donor, uh, so you have all that for you. Um, you can't thank them enough, and the way we see it, there are three opportunities to thank them. One is obviously the automatically generated uh, email. Another one is when the project is finished on Power to Give, you've reached your goal or it's, it's completed, and you can share that information with them. And the third time is when you actually have the project, when you actually hold the project, and you can let them know that it's coming up and invite them to participate. And we really hope that you use this donor information to incorporate these donors into your ongoing development um, campaign. So if you have a development, uh, a, a donor list, you need to incorporate these folks into it and use them going forward. Again, 
make sure you cultivate them. Um, make sure you invite them to activities. Uh, and again, we'll be having testimonials. Uh, we have a new feature coming on shortly where donors will be able to add testimonials to each project, and that'll be a great opportunity for them to share their feelings. So here's the particulars. Uh, we're going to be launching in Columbus on October 17th. Uh, this is the link that you can use to log in. I think I've already shared that with you. Um, you need to go ahead, and as of today, you can go ahead and log, log in there and create a, uh, your own account and get started. The Arts Council needs to have you submit your projects by 926, September 26, if you want it to be listed in the launch on October 17th. Now, normally there's no deadline, okay? You can post a project anytime that you feel like it. Uh, we hope that you uh, think about a an annual plan of work for Power to Give so that you always have one or more projects on the system. But for the launch, in order for it to appear on the project page uh, on October 17th, they need to have you submit your projects by uh, September 26th. So we encourage you to do that. Um, and there's some links there. You can go to Facebook, Power to Give, and at powertogive.org on Twitter. Again, take a look at those uh, and uh, like those pages and get that started. And so you can start to see what's going on elsewhere in the community and your projects will appear there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and see if there are any remaining questions. Not seeing any. Um, it's been, I apologize for the for the slides. Uh, Ruby's asking if we can do another session and I, I will go ahead and rerun this and uh, we'll have this uh, slide presentation available to you both as a PowerPoint and you can also, uh, if you have other folks on your staff that need to see it, um, there'll be a movie that they can watch that basically replays this, this slideshow. Um, we're excited. Uh, Columbus is a great uh, community. I've enjoyed, uh, I've been up there twice now working with the, the Arts Council staff and I think you've got a tremendous uh, support network uh, with the Arts Council. Uh, they want to help you succeed with this. Um, those of you, you know, you said, I think there are 40% of you or four out of the 10 that are online, so they hadn't done social media uh, or, or uh, crowdfunding. It's not that complicated. It really is, um, it should be easy and fun, and it's a way to reach new markets. It's also a way to appeal to your current, uh, current audiences as well. We think it's going to be a great uh, program for uh, for Columbus, and we're excited about what 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 we'll see on uh, on the 17th of October. So, if there are no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I will stay on the line for a few more minutes if you have specific questions. Uh, but appreciate your time today. We hope this has given you an overview of the the great uh, product or project platform for Power to Give, and look forward to working with each of you to make it a success for your organization. Thanks so much.